Hi, it's Mrs. Sarik again, and this is your next lesson in Differences in People, which is based on the novel of Mice and Men. And within this lesson, we're going to introduce poetry that's connected to differences in people. You will, have all, as always, need a pen and paper because there will be a task for you to do at the end of the lesson. So the learning objective, can I examine Caribbean culture through analysis of Nothing's Changed? Nothing's Changed is a name of the poem that we're going to read together. And when we do read it, then I'd like you to write down what you think is quite important within the poem. But firstly, I do now is write down what the title means to you. Nothing's Changed. What do you think that means? OK, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to just write that down, what it means to you. Off you go. OK, so you may have thought of many, many ideas and every idea that you have is yours personally, which is fine. But I've just put some down here that might help you. So it could mean that no matter what happens, people will always judge you as a person. Lots of things have changed in the world. However, the fundamental judgments do not change. Immigrants coming into this country still feel isolated. And I want you to think about how immigrants feel about Brexit. It's unusual, isn't it? OK, I'm going to give you two minutes here to write down from the first part of the poem of what you feel that's interesting, what you feel the poet is trying to say, what you think, whether it's there's a rhyming scheme, whether you think that um, the different language that's used anything that you can find out with that i'm going to give you two minutes to write it down off you go OK, so let's go through this together then are the things that perhaps you, that you saw that are important. OK, so this first part here, small round hard stones click under my heels. That is a real detailed sentence, isn't it? It gives you the image of what it's straight away. It takes you into the image of where the poet 
is talking about District 6. District 6 is an area in South Africa that um, was renowned for black people being basically shunned from the area um, and they had their part of the area and white people had their part and that's what the poem is pretty much about. Um, it, and he's saying, actually, the poet's saying that nobody, there's no board at all that says that it's District 6. There's nobody that says blacks over here, whites over there. However, they know. And that's what it says down here. No sign says it is, but we know where we belong. OK, so you need to write that down as I'm talking, because there's quite a lot of information within the poem about um, and we're going to dissect it um, in a table form in a couple of moments. OK, so I press my nose to the clear pane. So he's suggesting here that he's looking through the glass of where the white people can eat because he's not allowed in. So he just wants to have a look at what they're actually what it's like being in that environment. And he compares it then to what it's like in his world. So down the road, there's a working man's cafe and bunny chews are um, little chews that people used to eat at that time. And he's looking at the plastic tabletop, spit a little on the floor. So it's completely contrasting to what he's talking about of where the white people can eat. And most importantly here, down the bottom, he comes back with nothing's changed, which is, of course, the title of the poem. So it brings you round in a full circle of why the poet feels as though nothing, in fact, has changed from that time and in, from District 6. OK. So I want you to draw this table out on your paper and fill out the second column. Now, the first the first line here, first column here, that's a quote. I've taken a few quotes from the poem and I want you to think of the language that's used, the language that's used within the within that quote and then how that relates to the difference in cultures from South Africa. Now, the first one I've done for you. So I've taken cans, trodden on, crunch in tall purple flowering amiable weeds. Now the language that's used there, the can suggests it's littered. There's cans all over the floor and they've been trodden on. So people have just left them about. The personification, the language that's used, of the weeds show that these are unkept. If you've got tall weeds, there it means that people haven't bothered about it. But the fact that it's personified amiable weeds draws your, the reader's attention to the fact that actually it's a it, it's it's unusual combination between friendly and weeds because people see weeds as a, a nuisance. So it's quite a contradiction here. And then how it relates to the culture. OK, District six has not been fully redeveloped. It appears neglected. OK. The blacks were forced to move out and the land is now derelict. So it means that that the black people have been told to go, but actually, for what reason? There's nowhere for them to go. And the area that they've been told to move out from is derelict, which means that nothing's happening there. OK, I'm going to give you three minutes just to fill out this column, just to fill out the second column, because we'll do the third column together at the end. But just to fill out that column, I'm going to give you three minutes. Off you go.
OK. So let's go through these together. The first one, the hot, white, inwards turning anger of my eyes. The use of a pair of three, three, th three suggestions together, hot, white, inwards, suggesting the customer is rolling their eyes at the situation. The poet is basically saying that although it's very familiar, although these situations are really familiar, it's still not considered fair or right. Using the emotive language of anger explains how the poet feels at this situation. He's angry that people are treating them differently just because of the colour of their skin. Just a couple of minutes, just a couple of minutes to just write that down if you haven't got that. Just add it to yours. OK, the next one, the next quote. New upmarket, hot cuisine, guard at the gatepost, white only in. The list used here, new upmarket, hot cuisine, uses positive and flamboyant adjectives. They're very positive. It, you get the impression that um, it's, it's quite posh. Um, hot cuisine, which is like the new type of food, a variety of food that is being is being delivered. It's upmarket and it's new and clean. And it suggests that there's only the white people allowed in. The alliteration used here in guard at the gatepost suggests that the blacks are being turned away before they even reach the door. They're being turned away at the gate by people standing there to get rid of them. Crushed ice, white glass, linen falls, the single rows. Imagery is used here to show the reader how much effort is put into the white cafe compared to that of the black cafe. Crushed ice, white glass, the fact that they're actually just using glass for their drinks is important. Linen falls, that's suggesting that it's a tablecloth and that every table has got a tablecloth and in the middle of the tablecloth is a single rose. So a lot of effort has been put in to ensure that the white people have a positive experience. Spit a little on the floor, it's in the bow. Again, imagery used as a total opposite to those adjectives used in the white cafe. They're allowed to spit on the floor. They're given bones to eat. OK, I'm going to give you just a minute to write down that. OK, moving on, we need to have a look at the third column now. So fill out the third column um, to the best of your ability, following the uh, first one that's been done for you and information that you've got. This is your task. You need to write an essay that what is the poem about? What do you think it's about? Well, we've gone through that quite in detail. How does a poem present the theme? Is the poet angry? Is it demonstrative? Do you get a clear picture of what it was like for him at that time in South Africa? What is the context of the poem? Well, throughout Of Mice and Men and throughout our lessons, We've been talking about people and how they're different, how they're different and how they're treated differently. How many stanzas, i.e. how many verses? 
does the poem have? And what effect does it have on the reader? What effect do the, the adjectives that he uses have on the reader? Does it have any rhyme schemes? And again, what impact does that have? And what other techniques can you find? Now you need to do a side of A4. You've got enough information that we've gone through together um, if you've been writing it down. So good luck and I'll